Well, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you may be at, and I want to welcome you to a very special uh, webinar. I'm very excited to be able to talk with the CEO of Voices.com, David Cicerelli. David, hello and greetings. Hey, great to be here, Bill. Thanks for the opportunity to come chat and uh, talk about the industry, uh, the voice talent, where it's heading, uh, what we've been up to. So appreciate being the opportunity to be here. Well, you know, of course, the first burning question is, is that a green screen behind you or is that <laughs> actually, is that real stuff? No, that's that's real stuff. It's uh, it's downtown London, Ontario. So uh, certainly not the capital of Canada or Ontario for that matter, but uh, a, a beautiful city nonetheless, and uh, proud to call it home. Yeah, that's a, that is a gorgeous view. So obviously, you had to borrow somebody else's office to get that kind of view. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, you know, just to kind of to set things up a little bit, again, I want, I want to thank you for taking the, the, the time to do this. And, um, yeah. uh, you know, I've been much anticipating this as well as, uh, as many others. Um, I want to talk a little bit about kind of the scope of what we will kind of be revolving around and so that people can prepare sure. their questions, the comments, and you can, and by the way, thank you for being on the webinar. And there's a place where you can just enter those in. Uh, I'm quite sure we won't be able to hit every single thing that comes our way just because of the, the number of people who are on today, but I have received some questions ahead of time. So my point being, I'll try to get to as many, you know, as, as we possibly can. Um, and want to really focus around as much as possible anyhow talk about uh, the professional services which i know you're anxious to talk about david uh, rates yeah. but talk about you know we'll talk about the the industry in general as well because i know a lot of the folks on uh, there are certainly those who are more seasoned, who have been around for a while, who have been a part of a lot of the discussions and social media forums. But there's those who are newer, really, to all of this as well and right. really don't really fully understand what the voiceover industry is all about. Um, so I also I just wanted to let people know in terms of managing expectations. This is not a 60-minute expose. This is not a gotcha kind of thing. This is not an interrogation or a debate. What I'm about and really what my YouTube channel is about and my, my presence in terms of being a voiceover coach is to try to facilitate information that will be as helpful as possible to those who are looking to build a voiceover career and business. Um, right. And I understand what that means. I understand what it means to, you know, to work and sweat and bleed and, and you know, to make this thing happen. So I want to offer information and help provide information and create a platform to create that information to help to do that. So everything that we're doing there is in the spirit of that. It's in the spirit of honesty and transparency and mutual respect. And so that's what I hope to facilitate that kind of discussion today. So, again, just to kind of put that on the table so everybody understands where we're going with all of this. But... David, I met your wife, Stephanie, a couple years ago in yeah. Columbus, Ohio. Enjoyed that yeah. and some of your, your great staff folks uh, there as well. But this is my first time to meet you, so it's a real pleasure. And anxious, I want to hear what – tell us about the rise of Voices.com. I mean, you guys have really been at the forefront of creating this, this online platform that I always say has really democratized the voiceover industry. You've pushed access – uh, and you've been a part of pushing that access down to really everybody, where it used to be for only those who had access through agencies and the more traditional channels. So how did this all start for you? Yeah, um, it's it's a really interesting, uh, it's a story. It's as much of a, a love story between Stephanie and I uh, <laughs> as one a passion for this space. Um, well, you know, for those who aren't, uh, aren't aware, or may not have heard, um, you know, my background is actually in audio engineering. You know, I was a musician growing up, um, played drums and piano, and uh, re really my, my folks were quite encouraging in, uh, in the sense that they, uh, they didn't necessarily, uh, you know, push me down a path of, uh, of the traditional university or college. In fact, uh, I found an audio recording uh, production um, school and one that was dedicated to uh, r raising up uh, audio engineers. And so I went through that program uh, only to open up a small recording studio here in London, in fact, just across the street. So we, in some ways we kind of didn't really get that far, at least not in the geographic proximity. But I opened up the small recording studio and I uh, got my name in the newspaper on my birthday. And it was because of that newspaper article that, uh, unbeknownst to me, Stephanie uh, was out there in the world. and. Uh, she is a crack classically trained singer. She was uh, at the Western University in the music program, uh, and her major was voice, um, you know, albeit for singing. And uh, her mom saw this article in the newspaper and cut it out and left it on her bed for her to uh, come down and do a demo CD. So 
Um, you know, this is again going back more than ten years, so that's when CDs were all the rage. Um, but I think you know, uh, you know, all, all jokes aside, um, you know, I think her mom was uh, tired of carpooling her around to all these auditions and uh, and uh, performances at uh, weddings and funerals and special events. Said, why don't you go record something with this fellow? And so Stephanie came in and, and we hit it off um, right away. And uh, it was because of that same newspaper article that there were other small businesses in town um, that were interested in having a voiceover recorded for uh, a radio commercial and a phone system. And I had honestly never, um, you know, aside from limited uh, radio dramas experience through school, really had not been kind of eyes open to this entire industry, uh, a burgeoning industry at that, that was out there and um, said yes to, to, these, uh, to these opportunities to use the studio to do rec uh, voiceovers knowing that uh, they wanted a female voice so I called up Stephanie and, and she read the copy and that was really our first instance <laughs> and uh, exposure if you will to um, what uh, you know what was possible and the uh, you know the, the moment uh, became you know we were modestly successful in London Ontario doing these voiceovers for a handful of clients that we thought well we should put up a website we literally taught ourselves how to code uh, our, our first generation wow. of the website and you know, uh, literally by taking books out of the library. So uh, you know, uh, nowadays there's amazing tools out there where you can teach yourself to code. But we did it by taking out books. And um, you know, it wasn't long before folks would contact us and saying, "Can I? Uh, you need somebody who speaks French or Spanish. You need somebody in L.A. or New York. Um, you know, you need this character uh, type voice. Or I do these celebrity impersonations. Can I be on your site?" And we literally hand coded all those pages from scratch. Uh, and that was the moment where we realized, well, look, we're, you know, let's kind of get out of the um, production business ourselves um, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, uh, on a heart-to-heart -heart basis, you know, we had a young, young child, uh, a newborn, and it's uh, pretty tough recording voiceovers with babies crying in the background. And um, so I've heard. Seeing, yeah, exactly. And so seeing some, some, uh, some early traction and interest from freelance voice talent, professionals who in turn were creating, the, you know, either creating their own websites or having tr trouble doing so, um, but stumbling upon uh, upon what has now become Voices.com. But the basic premise is has always been the same, where we provide a marketplace, where we connect, uh, we provide a venue, a platform for those voice talent to showcase their skills, um, and that's their artistic skills, um, their technical skills as well too. Uh, recording and editing, and then as uh, in turn on the other side of the marketplace, uh, as you know well, would be those clients. And the clients range from small businesses, yes, uh, uh, all the way up through to uh, ad agencies, medium-sized organizations, um, educational facilities, and you know global brands. Um, that uh, I think every talent really aspires to being able to work and be the voice, the audio ambassador, mm -hmm. if you will, of one of those global brands. But that basic premise has always been the same. Did you have any idea how many people would be interested in the whole idea of recording voiceovers prior to launching Voices.com? Not, not at all. <laughs> um, you know, and and that's you know one of those things that certainly is is very humbling. I mean, even. Even now, you know, it's it's kind of you know pinch yourself. There's a huge industry out there um, that is uh, to most people who aren't in this space, um, just they're aware of it when you tell them, but it just flies under the radar. You know, yeah. voice often plays a supporting role, and audio in more general plays a supporting role to video, and um, you know, or even if you think of. Uh, of the books, you know, the audio book is 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 produced second, and and it's not that it's a that it's a, a lesser of value. It's just sometimes not necessarily the first thing people think about, and except for I would say radio and television commercials, then it certainly is one of those prominent uh, prominent elements of the production. But we've we've uh, you know gone to lengths obviously to um, to connect with those uh, and kind of reach out to those clients to educate them that there's a variety of opportunities for them in turn to be able to use voice or audio to brand their own company from the moment a new customer calls into their business um, through to their YouTube videos, their trade show uh, kiosks, um, commercials if they're into that, if they're kind of a retail outlet, um, training videos. I mean, you you know full well that, that just the 
the, the, the really the kind of variety, the diversity of work, and I think that's one of those elements that's uh, that's kept it exciting for us. Um, the team of people here that every you know client that we work with is different. They're all looking for really a slightly different um, a different talent or voice that, that's best suited for that project. And uh, our role is to help those uh, those two people find each other. Well, I think, and I think you touch on an important point. I just want to make sure, in case that kind of flew by some some of us, that voiceover tends to be the last link of the production chain, and oftentimes almost seems like it's it's the last thought. So the nature of the business for us on this side of the mic tends to be, hey, oh crap, we forgot. We've got you know we need a voiceover, and I'm exaggerating the point, but it's like, and we need right. it now, or we need it by tonight or tomorrow. Which is where I think the online casting has really, I'm not saying that's all you do, but I, but I think it's really helped to facilitate bringing people into this business who can respond quickly and offer a high yeah. level of service. Absolutely. I was, I was going to say, ain't that the truth? I mean, you know, ad agencies in particular are just so time crunch and, you know, the regular guy or gal just may not be available. The session was canceled, postponed. Um, maybe the, the, their deadlines got moved up. And so we view this, um, you know, we talked about this a few years back um, in, in kind of our 12 trends that we had written about is that speed is becoming the critical differentiator and uh, at least, and, and uh, if I may, a competitive advantage for working through a, a site such as Voices.com um, versus, you know, as you put it, those more kind of traditional, traditional methods. I mean, isn't that what we all do, you know? Um, when you have trouble, you immediately go to Google and you Google around and you say, I need this right now. I have this problem. I'm looking for a solution. And lo and behold, uh, Voices.com along with a collection of other sites um, do show up and it's those who can respond very, very quickly tend to be those who ultimately win the job. And that makes perfect sense because they've been able to uh, put their stake in the ground. Now suddenly they become the benchmark you know, um, uh, uh, that all other services uh, or service providers are compared against. Um, so we've definitely seen that. You know, a client that, that posts a job, you know, signs up with Voices or posts a job here, um, you know, and, and, and honestly, due to the very, uh, the, the high level of commitment of the talent, the, you know, the talent's responsiveness of so many of you watching today, that's really what they're, uh, using Voices.com to uh, to tap into is this the, the professionalism and, and the speed of the talent uh, with their one goal in mind just to get that job done. We are also fortunate to be doing this at this time in history. It's a really unique opportunity. I mean, and you mentioned Google. Uh, I literally built my business, my career using Google. When I first started off, that's how I learned about the voiceover industry. That's where I found my clients. That's where if I wanted, I mean, that I learned everything, literally almost everything I do, I learned, well, I certainly had some business background. I'm not, so I understood mm -hmm. some concepts, but, but that for me put the pieces of the puzzle together and gave me access. So uh, sometimes I think we take it all for granted, but this is, I mean, what an exciting and a really cool time to be doing what we do. So now, um, as we mentioned earlier, obviously you guys are, you know, among those at the forefront of leading this, this online casting charge, but I know you have your own unique model. So let's talk more about Voices.com, your structure, how you operate and how you make all of this happen. I know it's a very broad, sure. open-ended question, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I think if, if I may, I think it's important to kind of uh, understand the context, you know, um, to carry on really that story. You know, I, you know, yes, we're a marketplace. Um, that's uh, an important um, differentiator. Um, and we have always, uh, you know, served as that, what we view, this trusted intermediary where we don't um, represent the talent, we don't represent the clients per se, but really our, our sole job is to facilitate these connections. So kind of looking back, you know, from the very earliest days, um, you know, it, it, it sounds like, uh, if, if I can understand the question, I want to make sure I'm, I'm answering it uh, in the right way, kind of the evolution of the, of the business model. Is yes, that, yeah, is exa that exactly, yeah. Okay, okay. so, um, you know, when we first started, it was, uh, it was purely a uh, membership invitation only, um, subscription-based service. Uh, and so what that means is that only we invited a really a, a small limited group of folks uh, of talent who had already actually found us in, in, in a lot of ways and asked for referrals but uh, said look for um, we will help you 
uh, we will market you online. We will help you find, uh, and we're going and we're by marking you online, giving you a profile, help you find voiceover jobs, which we're going to go out and get, and um, that you normally wouldn't have access to otherwise, especially if you're not in a major center like uh, New York, LA, or Chicago, or in Canada, Toronto, or Vancouver. I mean, if you're outside of those main production hubs, you know, the opportunities are in some ways few and far between. So this uh, was a tremendously appealing value proposition to those talent uh, out there and so uh, for that in exchange was a was a small membership fee and I believe it started at $99 for the year and uh, with that initial group of, uh, of talent uh, you know we, we set out to um, really go out and find as many job opportunities clients that would be uh, potentially posting jobs or maybe needing more broadly needing voiceover um, a, as quickly as possible to bring them uh, and uh, bring them to the site, and this was, uh, t to be honest, no, no easy task. Um, we were, you know, the good news is we weren't introducing a new, a new uh, service that they've never heard of before. I mean, you know, I, I go to a lot of startup conferences, and people are inventing some amazing technology out there, but it is like a, a, a paradigm shift. With Voices.com, they were already hiring talent. We just provided uh, those clients with a faster, easier way to ultimately get to you. And um, so that's, you know, that's what we did. And this is, you know, again, sometimes referred to as the chicken and the egg um, conundrum, right? You need any marketplace, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult uh, from the standpoint of you need enough talent, which we're grateful for all, for all the talent who have chosen to sign up at Voices, in order for it to be appealing for that client to go, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, um, you know, trust the site with my, uh, with my, client project details, my client login credentials to find the talent. So there needs to be enough talent there and in turn the talent will only join if there's enough job opportunities there. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know we've always um, done an equal balance in terms of uh, uh, of our marketing, our outreach, um, communications uh, generally speaking um, to, to both sides of the market. So that was um, really we kind of carried that model for the first I want to say five years um, and it wasn't until uh, I had the opportunity to present on uh, on Dragon's Den uh, which was actually um, you know the equivalent of Shark Tank for those in the in the States um, my wife's and, favorite show uh, by the way yeah it's certainly entertaining and uh, you know, went on there and, and gave gave a pitch um, and explained the, the the service, the platform, and the community of, of folks that were out there, and the and the the brands that were already using Voices, uh, and the the Dragons um, gave some feedback, which was you got to be charging those clients something. They're getting all the value, you know. That's wonderful. You know, they're getting a, in 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 some senses a disproportionate amount of the value here. They're not paying anything. Yet you're uh, marketing to get them, and you're also, um, you know, answering their questions throughout the entire process. You're facilitating how they get these auditions. Um, yet they're not paying you anything. So that was, you know, my takeaway there, um, and kind of went back to the drawing board was to say, look, if we've got a growing number of clients, um, how how do we? Solve the problem of um, you know in business speak monetization of that uh, of that client relationship, but also how do we solve this other challenge, which was clients finding talent, um, it, uh, hiring them you know through this site. Basically, we we're just merely being this kind of matchmaker, this you know connection, hiring them, um, saying, "Yep, I want to work with you." The talent um, recording the entire work, delivering it electronically. Uh, you know, using, you know, again, we're going back a few years here, either using a file sharing site, FTP servers, um, you know, delivering CDs in some cases if there were long uh, recordings, and then struggling with figuring out how to get paid for this thing. Some people would send PayPal invoices. Not everyone knew how to do that. Um, and that, unfortunately, resulted in a few uh, bad Apple clients that just that burned the talent. And I know that that um, still happens today. Uh, elsewhere, and that's really troubling. That there are those who uh, think that it's that it's appropriate that they don't have to pay for a creative service uh, when they absolutely should. And so, uh, our answer to both of those questions was the development of our SurePay payment platform, um, a technology that we've built in house, we've patented in the U.S., 
and uh, one that now the client um, posts a job with the budget range, um, let's say 500 to 750 dollars. The talent in turn see the full job specifications as well as the budget range, and that provides the talent with some guidance on kind of what the client's thinking ballpark, uh, what it is to spend on uh, on voiceover. And the talent, we give them the choice. You know, how do you want to how do you want to quote on this? Do you want to quote five hundred dollars? Uh, and she's on a 10% transaction fee. Um, a two and a half immediately goes to processing the credit card payment, uh, and then we hold those uh, we hold those funds in a neutral uh, bank account known as an escrow account, um, and that's completely discreet and separate from all other operations. Uh, and the only funds in there are those for client payments to talent. When the talent completes the recording. They uh, upload it back to Voices.com, so they have the piece of knowing that, in effect, I mean, it's sitting in a bank account uh, for them. Really, what they need to do next is complete the recording, upload the files, and the, uh, the 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 client can then listen to them. They can request an edit if need be. They can approve them and uh, release the payment. And that that whole process, uh, well, there's a few steps in there. Certainly, um, is is by far the fastest and easiest way to hire a talent. Um, online, uh, period, and the and the talent. It's also uh, you know arguably one of the fastest ways that they get paid. We pay um, you, you know literally hundreds, if not thousands. You know I think we're crossing the thousand every uh, um, every couple of weeks of, mm -hmm. of talent that are getting getting hired um, that we're paying them out um, a, a, again at their own choice. Do you want to get paid to receive money into your PayPal account um, as what we what we've deemed. Um, and we set it up with PayPal. It's what's called a gift, so that the, the talent in turn don't need to again <laughs> absorb another two and a half percent deduction. Mm -hmm. So we've actually uh, set up a relationship with PayPal so we can push these payments out. That it's not costing talent even more um, to just simply receive a payment. So it actually is cheaper than receiving it on your own, um, and uh, or by check. And we mail out we mail out the checks, and uh, you know. Uh, you know, not I, I personally sign them, and, and we write, uh, you know, thank you for doing business with us and choosing voices on uh, on all those checks that go out to the talent because it's it's you guys, the community, that uh, that really are the lifeblood and, and really why we exist. So the sure pay, I mean, ensures for those who are worried about getting paid, it ensures we get paid. And, I mean, we and as a voices, and by, a, by an interest of full disclosure, I am a paying voices dot sure. com. You know, talent, obviously, and I've, I've right. had quite a few jobs, made quite a bit of money. And so it's, yes, I always know those checks are going to come. There's never an issue with that. So if that's something that you do get concerned about. And in a lot of people, you know, it's funny. I actually did a webinar last night. We were talking about back office, a voiceover. And, and one of the questions that came up, my, my daughter actually works for me full time, and she's my administrative assistant and runs the entire operation. And she said, you know, the thing that came up more than anything else last night was this you know, invoicing and getting paid. And so obviously that is a burning issue and question on people's mind and they feel a little insecure about that. So this is one headache you essentially take away. You know, we, we, we certainly believe so. I mean, talent are, um, you know, are great at um, the artistic abilities and having the home studio. And we just feel like, you know, that's, you know, somebody gave me some great advice once. Do the things that only you can do. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're trying to decide, do I pursue this opportunity? Do I um, do I attend this event? Do, am I engaged in this task or this project? Uh, and when you kind of list out all the things you do in a day, right? You, you yourself only you can be in front of the mic microphone and and providing the voiceover and all of those other uh, areas of responsibilities. Um, it sounds like uh, you know you you have uh, you know your your wonderful daughter to help help you out in those situations. And uh, similarly, when it comes time to kind of looking at voice acting as a business, a freelance, uh, a small business, you got to decide: okay, um, do I want to spend my time auditioning and doing uh, and doing voiceover work, uh, and uh, and and uh, having the payment handled uh, through voices, uh, or do I want to be uh, chasing that down? And right. we've never ever missed a payment to uh, to a voice talent, and I'm talking. Tens and tens of millions of dollars. I think we're soon to be coming up, you know, uh, you know, crossing that next threshold. And so, never missed a payment, even when, you know, there's a fraudulent credit card, which has happened. Even when the clients 
credit card maxes out or something else happens, look, the talent did the work. And that's, you know, it's, it, it becomes our responsibility to collect the payment. Um, and again, that's, again, one of those stories that's just not told often enough. And, you know, um, we pay out the talent. It's a guaranteed payment regardless of what happens on, on the client's end. Okay, and now let's kind of maybe we'll, we'll segue. That's a good segue, I think, into sure. uh, as you talk about the evolution of the business model. And I know one of the areas that you wanted to talk about, and I know there are a lot of questions, uh, would be in the area of yeah. professional services. So and that's which yeah. is you really working on the other side with uh, the clients who come in to hire the voice talent. So kind of fill us in uh, there how that all works. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, you know, if, if I may, I'll kind of keep that story going, mm-hmm. the, the evolution of, uh, of Voices.com. Um, you know, there were, there were a handful of uh, situations that came up um, that clients were coming to us uh, that really presented, uh, th- th- there was a bit of a theme here, and it presented a new, uh, you know, a, a new set of kind of data points, if you will, for us to go, huh, there's, there's something here that we're missing. Um, because up till that point, literally, it was all about trying to make everything go through the website, uh, and uh, and with some of these larger organizations, there were certainly some friction points with that. That's just not how they purchased. And so let me uh, kind of explain those four scenarios very quickly. Um, the first one was uh, with an advertising agency that was working with, uh, with Dell Computer that just wanted this project done as quickly as possible, you know, kind of going back to that competitive advantage that we all have, which is speed. They wanted it done that day, over and done with, um, and just wanted the recording. And so for that, that's kind of what the, the first case. Let's call them rush projects, right? And we've all, we've all had those. Um, and then the next one was uh, an opportunity to actually quote uh, and respond to a request for quote that we were invited to uh, from the Canadian government's uh, Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation, in which case it was a multi-voice, uh, multiple voices, multiple languages, French and English, uh, as we're bilingual up here in Canada, and, uh, and, and that's, that's government mandated. So everything the government produces needs to be, uh, needs to be bilingual. And, uh, you know, this was, again, uh, many, many hours, it was, and, and it was what we kind of just classified as a broad, uh, broad strokes here, but as a complex project. Um, it was a 20, we, we quote 20,000 after asking talent, what would you charge for X, Y, and Z, and, and how much are you available, these kind of things, put together a, a quote, and we ended up winning the, uh, winning the bid with uh, um, putting together the pros- proposal that was $20,000. So aside from those complex projects, that kind of quickly moves into these two other areas. Um, the first being um, these legal requirements. Oftentimes, the largest organizations in the world, um, let's call them the Fortune 500 companies, if you will, the Global 2000, um, you know, they have a different buying process. And this was a big kind of eye-opener for me. Not they don't exactly have everyone um, is empowered or equipped with a credit card that they can simply uh, run through their their a website such as Voices.com. Instead, they have a whole buying process, and that often starts with getting on a vendor's list. You know, the vendor's list is the internal database of companies that uh, that they are, their people are approved to do business with, um, because those vendors might be bound by uh, separate terms of service. Um, it might be bound by a non-disclosure agreement, so we, you know, we've realized that we needed to, uh, to to jump through these legal hurdles to basically assume that liability that should something go wrong, um, that that somebody is, uh, is is accountable. And then uh, aside from those legal, would be the last one. Again, we've got to be thinking big business here. Um, it would be those financial requirements. So they don't have you know, because they don't have they don't just have legal. Anyone can. Uh, they have the legal needs, but they also have the financial needs. Where, uh, you know, I was kind of alluding to this: that somebody who doesn't have the credit card, they do have somebody on a vendor's list, but they got to get a purchase order. And then they have a purchase order. Now they send that to the vendor or service provider. In this case, uh, at Voices.com, and say, "Here's the work order. Here's what we want done to manage the whole project. Here's the purchase order." And uh, when it comes, you know, complete the project, delivers the files, and when it comes time to payment, um, you know, send us an invoice, and then we will, uh, we will either pay you by a check, in which case we're waiting 36 to 60 days for, 
or we'll wire you the money um, directly from their account into into, uh, into into ours. And so those, I mean, as you can see, especially those last two, the legal and the financial requirements of large organizations, um, it's just not conducive with doing this kind of highly automated self-serve um, you know, do-it-yourself approach on the web. And so our answer to those four scenarios was the introduction of professional services, a way that we could offer a higher level uh, of, of service for those uh, large organizations that kind of met that criteria. And uh, that, that's really the genesis of, of how it began, and uh, which is about, let's call it two and a half, three years old now, and um, has actually been uh, one of the most uh, highly rated uh, areas from the client experience um, because they're talking to someone, they're not just working through the website, um, uh, as, as well as, uh, you know, the, the fastest kind of area of where we see jobs being sourced um, is also our, our, you know, this is amazing professional services team that is reaching out to um, to, for to, for new business opportunities and bringing those jobs to the site, so that that's where it all that's where it all came, and and uh, we're you know we're really proud of the great work that they've been doing. So so speaking of the production services, so would is it would you characterize it as more of an administrative type of support, or is it is it more on the on on the production? Um, do you do full bone production, or is it maybe it just depends on what the client needs both. Yeah, um, you know, I think it's uh, it started as well as um, yeah. I think to answer, I mean, it's it's really a, it's it depends on what the client needs, and okay. uh, you know, myself as much as anyone, I, I really dislike the answer. It depends, um, but there have been clients that say, I need this literally spliced up into different chapters, okay. or I've got it. Um, do you have somebody in house that can recommend now a music track, or can you just quickly edit this, you know, top and tail off off of it? Uh, th that's not the bulk of it, and yeah. I don't want to uh, to, to uh, give that impression, but it certainly does happen. Uh, most of it, you're right, is is administrative. So after that project is um, is is kind of committed to uh, by the client, uh, the account manager works hand in hand. With uh, with another internal team called project administrators, so they're they're buddied up, if you will, um, where the project uh, project admins um, uh, forgive the internal uh, lingo here, but uh, the, the project administrators really kind of run with it afterwards um, because there is a lot, and again, there there might be a lot of deliverables, multiple multiple talent, multiple milestones. Um, you know, some of these, what we refer to again as these complex projects where uh, administration, you know, as, as you know, and I'm sure you've discovered, is, is certainly a unique skill set mm -hmm. that there are people who are wonderful at it. Yeah. And, and um, some of us and who are. are some, right, exactly. Uh, and, and, um, and, and admittedly, I'm one of those people as well. And uh, those who, who do have the ability to, to literally juggle hundreds, and I'm talking like 200 jobs at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, and not drop a ball, and not miss a deadline, and make not only you the talent look amazing, um, because that's really what the client is kind of, you know, ultimately judging is that experience. Did I get the files from the talent? Does it sound great when I watch the video and I see this production all come together? That's the wow, wow moment. And uh, you know, I've, I, 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 I don't tell them enough, but they're they're the they're the unsung heroes around here. Certainly, they 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 make the magic happen behind the scenes. Well, as somebody you know who does this full time uh, and works on multiple many projects, usually every day, uh, you can Ooh. testify to the fact the broadness of those those administrative and production things that come up. Um, they are many, but it sounds like a big part of the professional service is a shouldering the responsibility and liability for a project to make sure. You facilitate it, make sure it goes smoothly, and that the client's happy. You know, on the other end. Um, yeah. So yeah. We, we, yeah, we feel it's we feel it's in the same spirit of of you know the the the, the premise of our entire company, which was to deliver you know deliver opportunities to talent, give them access to those jobs, help them pursue their pursue their career, uh, in turn provide the voice for that brand. So we you know it's it is absolutely consistent with that. Some people need uh, you know some clients need a bit more handholding uh, throughout the process. Um, some clients choose not to. 
you know, let's 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 be straight about that as well too. There are some clients um, who who are happy um, using the website on an exclusive self service basis with and 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 don't want to talk to anyone. Yeah. I mean, I know when I you know go online of of lots of sites to to. Uh, buy something on Amazon or, or make a booking at a, at a hotel or a restaurant, um, you know, pretty straightforward, I can handle it. There's other times um, where it absolutely makes sense um, where, boy, that it, it might just be a little bit uh, outside my skill set mm -hmm. and uh, therefore I, I appreciate the ha knowing that there's, you know, the white glove approach that I could, uh, that I could go with uh, should, should I choose. Sure. Okay. And by the way, let me just quickly mention, uh, thanks to the patience of those who have been. I know we have a lot of questions coming in, but I thought it was important, David, that you give us context so that we really understand mm -hmm. where you've been, where you're at, you know, what the thinking behind what's going on. Um, and yep. I think most of the, the sensitivity and, and, and the people who have the majority of the questions that I've received over these past several days, week, really does revolve around the professional services. So now that we have a better right. idea of how that works, now we get into some of the nitty gritty. And here's sure. where this seems to be the crux of those who have issues or questions tends to revolve around how um, the, the amount that is paid for a project to Voices.com and then the amount mm -hmm. that the voice talent ends up with. And I'm, you know, we've all heard, well, I should, shouldn't say we, we've all heard, but many, if you've yeah. been on the, the social media forums, you've seen examples and, and documented cases, et cetera, et cetera. But before we get into specific questions, I just want to kind of throw that, that topic generally to you so that you can respond in general, and then maybe we can dig down more specifically. Sound fair sure. enough? Yeah. So, can you just so in in if I'm hearing you correctly, and, um, and I can give you a scenario, yeah. a, a made up yeah, scenario well, that might be representative. Well, yeah. Exactly. So, um, so if I'm hearing you correctly again, in, in kind of broad strokes, then we, we can certainly go there and and and, uh, and, and go into some detail. Um, that there is concern that um, the amount that is that is paid to Voices.com's professional services group. Uh, is is what exactly is is and the and the difference that is I believe you use that word the difference that ultimately right. is paid for the voice talent for their portion of the project right right uh, there is concern around the difference between those two things yes so you know we you know you know our our view on this has really been a matter of value you know it's the client that is choosing to work with professional services they're choosing to uh, have us quote on the project as a project not a, not just the voiceover job not that you know and, and I'm certainly you know have utmost respect of course I do for the, the, the amazing talent uh, that is represented and, and, and that is uh, that is showcased on voices.com but that is one part uh, of a project, so the project we just talked about, um, you know, let's let's call the the sourcing of the project, the administration, and then there are those other times where um, there might be translation, in which case we've partnered with a number of ISO certified translation companies, mm -hmm. and so there are other elements, and you know, if if I'm provided with the opportunity to respond to some of those concerns. You know, I think more cases than not, you'll find that the client has a much bigger scope of the project than the talent may be, you know, knowledgeable of or aware of. Right. And that's where I think there is, admittedly, a disconnect. Um, we've, uh, you know, have not done a great job, frankly, explaining what we're doing, which is why I'm here today. Um, we've been, you know, as, as I put in the blog post, we've been head down, uh, heads down, growing an amazing company that we're tremendously proud of. Um, and, and where did we fall down? We didn't communicate. And so we're sorry for that. But, you know, what we do recognize is that there's a disconnect there, um, and we're trying to kind of clear that up. Um, but again, our view is, uh, you know, if I may, that it's it's a matter of value. The client is deeming value, and therefore they are paying for us to just take care of it for them, whatever that means to them. 
it is really, uh, it's really, no, you know, again, it's not our judgment call. It's really nobody else's judgment call. It's the client's money. They've decided to spend that with Voices.com to get the whole thing taken care of. Okay. All right. And I mean, that makes perfectly good sense to me. Uh, and But there are some s- particulars that have come up. And again, you can say these are outliers. They're, you know, in a big company, stuff happens. Or mm-hmm. I think what people want to know are, are these standard business practices. And again, I'm just going right. with what I've got. So let me just throw out, if yeah. I made some scenarios. Um, sure. Here's one uh, question that came in. Um, I've had clients who didn't understand what my rate was versus what they were being charged for professional services. And the question to you would be, how do you communicate the rates to clients? And is a clear distinction made between what the voiceover artist is receiving and what is going directly to voices? And if no distinction is made, why? Why not? Right. So um, happy to answer that question as well. Um, and we can we can kind of keep these, these rolling. Uh, you, you know, you, uh, again, afforded me the opportunity here to um, make that distinction right off the bat that a lot of um, these situations that have that that have have come out that we deal with here, um, when they do arise, this is not this is not the norm. Okay, um, there are certainly uh, you know unfortunate uh, situations where again, just like we've we've let you guys down on the communication to the talent, we've let some clients down. We've apologized to them. We've tried to uh, clarify how we're how we're pricing these projects uh, and and engagements with them. Um, but it's certainly not the norm where you know I, I'm putting forth a you know a, a rule or a policy or procedure to 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 behave in a certain way. Um, that said, you know what I'm here taking taking the heat to be blunt um, for for how we've rolled this new service offering up. So happy to do that. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that this is, you know, again, another one of these heart to hearts. This is not the norm. It's not, I mean, not what we're trying to, um, you know, how we're trying to communicate this. So when we find out about uh, situations such as that you've, you've, uh, you've brought up and others, there's uh, you know a number of uh, of steps that we need to take internally. It all starts with uh, with the training. Um, you know there's uh, you know there's uh, communication training. There's uh, sales and marketing training. There's systems training on our customer relationship management system. Um, there's uh, listening sessions. There's uh, we go through a whole uh, you know series and and not just a one and done type training. Um, uh, experience for uh, account managers or new folks here at Voices.com, but this is ongoing, um, once if not twice a week. So part of that training is to highlight um, to a group. In fact, there was one uh, the other day where you know to bring up some of these examples and go, how could we have communicated this better? Um, and you know. How is this, you know, not as as clear as it could be? And so we use those as 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 what we call learning opportunities. And so, you know, that's that's really been um, our approach. And you're right. And, and again, I'm not I'm not diminishing the fact that they've, you know, that they that they happen. I'm sorry that they've happened, and they've and they, um, but that doesn't mean that they should. And so we're taking steps to. Um, to course correct, uh, certainly. So what I hear you saying then is that Voices.com policy is to provide a clearly laid structure for what people are paying in professional services. It's not arbitrary and just kind of off the seat of the pants. That would be the exception, not the rule. Yeah, no, certainly not off the seat of the pants. um, But at the same time, um, we've we've discovered with when we rolled out SurePay um, years ago that the clients uh, want to have one number. Um, they want to know uh, what is it going to cost to get this job done, mm-hmm. right? To get the project done, start to finish. That's really what it is. Because in our uh, in turn uh, surveys to uh, corporate clients, when we when we ask what percentage of their overall project you know, or initiative, if you will, corporate initiative, is dedicated to the board. It might be five percent. Just what is it cost? David, I apologize. I think the internet connection is um, 
I've lost you. Let's see what I'm going to try to do to uh, better facilitate this. Let me see if I can. I tested my speed. And I know I've got uh, quick speed. Let me um, let me turn off my camera and see if that helps. There. Can you hear me, David? I can hear you. Okay. I, I apologize. All of a sudden, it just froze up right when you're in the middle of making a point. And I apologize. If you could back up about two minutes or one minute and just sure. pick up again. Yeah, sure. So, you know, as I was saying, um, you know, just just encouraging and kind of challenging folks to kind of uh, take a moment to kind of zoom out to, to consider the larger picture of uh, some of these bigger initiatives, these corporate initiatives. That uh, that you are providing a vital role, speaking life into their script, um, but often it's it's part of a, a part of a bigger engagement. And so the only thing that's going uh, through their mind is what is it going to cost to get this thing done? Right. Okay. And so and so when so we've discovered that with uh, so the point, if I may, uh, was that we discovered that on the SurePay platform, you know, the talent quote, which we. Again, are are very clear with the, with the talent. The talent quote, uh, sure pay ten percent, and here's the client client fee. That's what the client is paying, and that's what's posted um, to them because they want to know what am I paying? Uh, what's going to be charged to my credit card? And uh, and so that we've we found to be the simplest, fastest. Again, these are. Um, value statements, if you will, or what we view as competitive advantages, fast and easy and simple, that's kind of the, the name of the game for us. And so for them to, uh, to kind of, you know, just like we don't ask any talent to break down, you know, when you're quoting, you're giving, you're, you're putting in one number, and that's what the client wants to see is one number as well. Um, and so that's, we've again uh, transferred that over onto the professional services group, it's one number to complete the job. Okay. Uh, so you've got your own structure, but the way it may be presented to the client would be, this is this is the quote. So they may yeah. not know. Okay. I'm sure you've worked with consultants that you ask, what is it going to cost to get, you know, to do all this? They're not necessarily giving you an hourly breakdown right. sure. or sure. a phase, but they just give you a number. I mean, our accounting firm, um, you know, who, who does these uh, annual audits, they they just state a number, and uh, uh, there you are. Yeah, I thought um, we'd try it again. I hope it doesn't mess things yeah. up. <laughs> so, you know, so again, in, in the, again, the name of, uh, of professional services, uh, you know, we found that that's, cons that's uh, consistent with other pricing structures and presentation of that pricing. Okay. Um, for 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 other related professional services. Okay. Now, and let me give give you another scenario. And I can't. I, this was actually an email that I received, and I can't find it. So I'm going to speak generally to it. But it it really it speaks to this this issue that you're talking about right now, and that it was they uh, had seen a job. Um, the same job posted through I think a couple of their agents plus through Voices. dot com. And uh, it was posted for, I'm just going to use a number, I think it was about $1,500. Um, but what they, uh, what it was posted for between five and seven fifty on Voices.com. So the question was, uh, if I remember correctly, does, does Voices.com project managers, are they in, incentivized to try to get the lowest price for the voice talent so that they can... No. scrape off as much as they can for themselves or for voices.com. And I hope that question makes sense, but that was the gist of like, so what's where, you know, the discrepancy between what they were casting it for, but the client was paying presumably $1,500, but the client talent was getting half, whereas an agency would only be taking 10%. There's a, Bill, there's a, ha there's a handful of assumptions you're making in there. Um, we might've won the, you know, we might've won the job um, for a thousand dollars. Or 850, right? So we don't, you know, the fact is, and and that's probably because maybe the client, you know, going through a, uh, you know, a, an agent in New York, uh, as those fees are certainly going to be higher. And so when we look at that, we go, huh, okay, well, in accordance with our rate sheet, which we've is our number one most visited resource on our website mm -hmm. for two reasons, because talent have had trouble quoting on projects and they want to have some guidelines and we develop the guidelines with the help of the talent by sending out a survey, asking for feedback 
and we've updated that um, uh, every year. In fact, just yesterday we sent out an email, um, you know, trying to get some some understanding on on those rates and provide some uh, some more revisions. So when we when we uh, are are working with the client, we price that out based upon the rate sheet, and then consider what are our costs, our administrative costs to actually complete that. Uh, complete that job. The account managers are not incentivized to, to drive the, you know, and again to be clear, to drive the the, the price amount paid to the talent. Um, to be frank, I've never heard that before. Okay. That is not the case. Um, you know, there the the compensation is is completely different than that. I'll tell you that much. And um, why why would uh, you know speaking as a as a business owner to another. Um, why would that be a good business practice? Um, to uh, t that would be harmful oh, to, uh, yeah. to to many folks, um, and not a, not a good practice at all. Which is that's not the way we do things. Um, instead, we use the rate sheet as our reference point. That's that's the that's the single point of truth. Okay. Got it. So let me give you another scenario that, that, that was received from the, from the client side. And again, you can state whether this is more anomaly or, or practice, just for the record. Sure. And that was where a client was casting for some multiple voices and was wanting, thought he was paying the voices 250 each because he wanted $250 level voices as opposed to $100 level voices. Or, right. And ended up, found out through communication with the end clients, they were getting half the amount. And he was he was upset that that had not been communicated to him. So again, I'll just throw that out to you to respond to. Sure. Um, you know these these type of stories are certainly not the norm. Okay. Um, it seems to me that uh, that uh, you know it's it's really it's sad to hear. Um, 